<sighs> well, guys, we're just uh, just got our first one. I don't need, I don't even know. I'm not good at measuring these things. I'd say it's 11 incher, maybe 12. Big fat fish, but um, we're gonna keep a few. We're on the board. Got the skunk out, so we'll keep a few. Get a good meal. Um, the other guys have seen Mark a few fish. We're not really catching them. We're marking quite a few, but it's just a matter of getting them to bite. So hopefully they fire up here. I'm going to set up kind of what we're doing here. I didn't get a ton of video. It was so cold that it was tough to get the cameras going outside when I was doing some interviews and stuff like that. So we're at Devil's Lake, North Dakota. It's... Uh, First week of February, um, we get out with Dustin Larson of Bry's Guide Service. Um, Dustin's, I think, one of the harder working guys out there. Um, Mike Olson uh, from Fish Addictions introduced me to him, and uh, Dustin does a hell of a job putting his, his clients on fish. So we go out there with him, uh, catch a bunch of big perch, do a little something else in the next video that I think you guys will find pretty intriguing and uh, go from there. We have a great time. Stay tuned. Hopefully you guys like the video. Hey. Are you whacking them yet? I got uh, one and I missed one, but I got a school of them down there right now. Okay, my, my house is getting them good if you want to do some videoing or I can take your camera and do it. Okay, I'll, uh, yeah, they're down there thick right now. Um, yeah, I'll get her, I'll get her taken care of. I'll be over there in a second. Well, I'll come and grab you so it don't look conspicuous. Alright. That'll Wait work. A minute. Yeah, bye. Oh, are you guys marking them? Unbelievable, I missed another one. Oh, God dang it. Okay, a couple things I'm learning about this here now. I'll show you what rig we're kind of using. But these things, you'd think they'd just come in and frickin' just suck it in, they frickin' hammer it. But you gotta hold it so still because they'll just push it up. It's crazy. There we go. Got him. This could be another beaut. Dustin's coming. You guys can probably hear him coming. Come watch this real quick. So, dude, okay, so here's what I'm learning about this decoy thing. Are these fish right here? Yep. Oh, so those are 15 feet that way. Okay? I got the two decoys right there, okay? Those are fish. These fish, they swim in, they sit under these decoys. And then they'll slide over to my line. My decoys are right in that hole. But it's weird. Like, wherever they come from, and they'll sit below those two decoys. And then when they get excited, they come over. So, this was the decoy thing that I was using um, down there. I figured, you know, it's going to keep fish closer. I don't know. We're going to try it out, see what happens. I got a big one and a small one uh, attached down here. I'm just dropping it down a hole next to me to try to attract these things and maybe keep them around longer. Um, we'll find out if it helps or not here pretty quick oh nice spooked up oh there it is Back. coming in on your side no way Maybe I was hooked on the ice there. I don't know. I didn't feel that one. I felt weight, so I just set it. 
That one's moving to the right. Mm -hmm. He didn't like something. I'm good. You got one right on you though, don't you? Mm -hmm. I haven't moved it. Unbelievable. No, oh, there's multiples there yep. on the left. How come you didn't clear my hole out? I got a bunch of slush in there. Oh my god. You guys see this? He's bitching. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't clean out his hole. That's what he's using as an excuse. Yeah. I'm hitting slush too. That's another key point. <laughs> clear your holes of slush when perch fishing. I told you. Yep. That's why I was whiny. What's a normal day like for a brides or a brides guy? If they come up here, what are they looking at doing? Oh, uh, this year we've been starting at seven and seven fifteen. Uh, sometimes we'll go for the walleye bite in the morning for an hour, hour and a half. So about nine o'clock, we're usually going after perch, and we'll go um, <clears throat> chase perch most of the day. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times that's kind of what I start off with the walleye bite. It seems as though some of Devil's Lake have been missing that age class, that 14 to 18 inch walleyes that we want to catch. Right. And so uh, <clears throat> at least that's where we're finding the perch is where the walleyes are missing. Neither too small or too big it seems to be what we're catching. Right. For walleyes. So um, yeah, go right after the perch. Sometimes there's windows in the mornings where if you're not on them perch right away in the morning. You're just not going to get them. Right. So, uh, and that's what most people come to Devil's Lake for is a jungle the perch. perch. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, the few that I've caught today, this is the first time being here. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, uh, that's pretty good. Uh, See that one? Oh, I do. Somewhere in on the right. Yeah. Looks like it's walking on the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's another one. See, there's yep. more coming. More coming. We're going to whack them here. I hope so. <clears throat> how many are there? How many of you are there? So we have six snow bears that go pretty regularly. Yeah. And then uh, I run a portable shack, or portable shacks, and then we have about uh, three full-time portable guys. Okay. It seems as though the demand's a little higher for the snow bears. Okay. Are you going to get bit? I, I'm hoping so. Right wow. as we're talking. They're like Two on, of them. on it. It's like three of them even. Wow, you can see exactly what a fish looks like too. They just need to bypass yours and come over. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, so we have six snow bears and three or four portable guys. And Oh my god, did you saw my rod tip? I didn't you? did. You got, that was, I was... Oh. You got hammered. You, uh... You said it though, like when they come in, you gotta watch your rod tip. Don't watch the screen, and I get watched. Oh my <laughs> no god! Way. I just want one one opportunity. Yeah. So yeah, what I like to do, I might get bit here. He's gonna embarrass me here. Look at there's like three or four of them down there. So what I like to do um, when I tell clients this is I put my flasher. This particular scenario, we can't really do it. We're kind of just kind of having fun here, but yeah. I put that flasher right on the end of my rod tip so my eyes can go from flasher to rod tip back to flasher if I need it to. Like super fast. Yep. That slush is a bugger. Here. I'm sick of hearing about some slush. Oh, you're so sweet, Drake. What yeah. if I get a bite and whack you in the head? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Here, mm -hmm. Except for I probably moved our transducer now. Yeah, and the, the bite is light. You know, if you pursue perch in Devil's Lake, or I guess anywhere for that matter, yeah. Uh, in the shallow areas, you can go with the buckshot and a minnow head or full minnow, those type of things. And I think those bigger perch are in that shallower water. You know, that could be six to ten to fifteen feet. You know, to twenty to twenty-five feet. Right. And uh, a lot of times, uh, depending on the structure they're on, they're behaving like walleyes, and so they're they're aggressive and they're feeding on minnows. And we're in a basin today, and yeah, 
it seems though if you're not using some sort of a larvae type bait you don't get quite as many bites and it seems as though they're just not as aggressive as those shallow water perch right and you're saying stop it like boy there's a yeah they're down there yeah I just can't I can't get them to bite right now. well I get them to bite but I can't get I can't keep them locked is it that I'm not holding my tongue right Drake or my elbow yeah, high enough right. or something yeah Oh, there's the elbow a little higher right up there. Is it? Like there's what is there? Three, four, five of them down there. I just had a little bump. So yeah, that's kind of what we're dealing with. They're really small pods in this basin. You know, it's not like the super schools that we look for. Right. And uh, it's a waiting game. You know, you might have a school of fish to come in. You catch one, two, three, up to five maybe fish, and then they're gone. Yep. Sit and wait 15, 20 minutes, half an hour, sometimes an hour, and then they come in, and it might be a 20 fish flutter depending on the size of that school. But right. capitalizing on, you know, an example, if we got these, these perch revved up, you catch a fish, I keep my lure down there, unless, of course, I get yeah, bit. Right. And as fast as you can, bait up, drop back down, and capitalize on those flurries. Yeah. But this basin is just really high flurry potential unlike let's say a, a tree bite or a contour bite that's just not quite as often that happens right these two are just sitting down here there's two fish down there right now they're just messing with us yeah and they're actually off the bottom a smidge they should be biting yep. yeah with these tungstens I like to do like a four pack of spikes Spikes over wax worms is the other thing. Yeah. Drake and I talked about that on the phone. Yeah. He came ill prepared and brought <laughs> wax worms instead hey, of spikes. I brought spikes too. Oh, you did? Yeah. But I still have a wax worm on. I don't know why. <clears throat> it seems as though it's not what they bite. It's uh, just, it seems like it just stays on your hook better, especially yeah. for that secondary bite. Right. And I noticed that with the first few fish that we caught. I mean, my wax worm was toast, and I'm trying to get down there, back down there as fast as I can. What about summer? Do you guys just generally chase walleyes the whole time then? Or do they, can they chase perch in the summer or is that not? Uh, it's really not really much of a thing. And I think it has to do with just the small baits it requires. Oh, little tinker toy. I got a little machine gun bite. Um, we do a lot of white bass and pike fishing too. Oh yeah, that's another thing, the yeah. white bass thing. White bass is a lot of fun. Limits 20, okay. possession limits 40 on the white bass, 5 for pike, 10 possession. So, you know, if the day's good and we get our walleyes early, we're usually chasing pike and white bass throughout the rest of the day. And uh, that's just just a lot of fun. fun. Yeah, a yeah. lot of our clients just want to get a bent rod. And, right. Um, they already got their fish for the table, which a lot of our clients want to keep the pike and white bass too. So it keeps me busy cleaning fish at the end yeah, of the day yeah. for sure. Right. Yeah, white bass, I mean, catch them casting a lot with jigs and plastics. I try not to throw crankbaits at them, just it tears the fish up. And, yeah. Um, if you're negligent, you'll get bit with those crankbaits. But, uh, and then jig wrapping them on, on rocks, that's fun. Um, yeah. Even pulling spinners with plastic on, I've, I've caught a fair amount with that right. presentation as well. Dude, that one is just on you. It's a matter of getting us. Yeah, they get as the day progresses with these perch, it uh, they get a lot more tentative, not as aggressive. I think they've been feeding all day, and it's just kind of. Is there like a night bite? Or you've never really done it, I'm sure. Yeah, I haven't really pursued the night bite. Uh, it seems as though you know I've walleye fished quite a lot in the evenings, in the mornings, and that's kind of our window, that hour, hour and a half, yeah, right? Shallow water. And uh, it seems though when that sun goes down, I think either A, we're in the travel corridor between point A and C, and we're sitting in B, and we just catch them as they go through, yep. probably going to even shallower water. This one's going to come up and hit you. Or they just, they feed so heavy right, right at that dusk that they just are full, and that's kind of the end of it. Yeah. I, I'm not 100% right. certain. 
I wonder if I'm too high up in the water column. I can't quite tell on that. Because, well, you're probably 35 feet. You're probably two feet up. Oh, that's too much. I'm just going to gamble here yeah. and drop. And I was looking on the website, too. Duck hunting. You even duck hunt, too, huh? Yep. So a few of us have... Uh, I have actually an outfitter <clears throat> hunting license. Okay. And then a couple of our guys, too, are... Uh, they're, they're, they have their guiding license. So we do... Uh, Mostly field hunting, but whatever the ducks tell me to do, yeah. I'll, I'll do some water hunts as well. Right. Boy, I had a, yeah, I'll never forget that. A couple of years ago, I had a gentleman from South Dakota, and it was only one guy, and yeah, it was the best water hunt I've ever seen. <laughs> it was just unreal. You know, waves of 200 yeah. birds coming yeah. in, and it was actually a staging pond. It wasn't a, a roost. Yep. It was like a middle one. It was the middle one between, yep. yeah, the, the roost and the field, and I don't even think, there must have been some sort of a, a specific weed or invertebrates or something that those ducks were eating in that staging pond and they just wanted in their bed. It was a lot of fun to see. And that was late in the year, that was late November, so the, the mallards were green, that's yeah, for sure. Exactly. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, this is going to be bad. I'll get bit while my phone's ringing here. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Nice. I can't hardly get up a bite. Nope. We were talking about that earlier, just. Hello. We're missing a lot. Like a lot. Missing a lot. Yeah, we suck. I'm not marking anything right Really? No, we were a little bit ago and none of them wouldn't even fucking touch it. Unbelievable. I don't understand it. Who knows? I'm not marking anything now. I haven't been for 15 minutes now. Uh, told you I'd get bit. Hang on there, Zach. I gotta get one on film here. This feels like a nice one. Zach, are you still having fun? <laughs> well, that's good. He's got a donkey on, I think. <clears throat> this might be... I got I got my drag set light, though. I mean, it's a nice one, but... If he doesn't dork it up at the bottom of the hole. Yeah. Which is very possible. I hope it's a, bi I hope it's a big white bass. That'd be funny. No, that would not be funny. Well, I told you... I Oh my god, I'm gonna dark it at the hole. Oh, it's a yes. oh. <laughs> Don't let it go in no. there. Oh, it's a good one. <laughs> see, that's what we've been chasing this whole time while we're talking. You can see them down there, but it's just a matter of getting them to eat. Yeah, like a 12, 13 incher. Yeah. Yeah, he says, like, like a 12, 13, no big deal. <laughs> oh, you're These are that huge. Too? So. <clears throat> That'd be good. I, I, yeah, he's outperforming. He's getting bit more often than I am. I don't know if he's just holding his tongue right or what. So what do you want to do tomorrow? Do you want to take a day off or do you want to fish or? I don't, I don't quite know yet. Can I, I'll let you know yeah. this evening. No, Because yeah, that I'm would be good, fish. um, I would, I'd probably go tear some stuff up. Do some, do something else, some other place. Try to prepare for, Monday's probably not happening with the, I heard that we're getting a blizzard. Are you leaving tomorrow at some point? Yeah. Tomorrow evening? Wow. Whenever. Whenever. Okay. No, you could do that. It'd be fine. I gotta come up with a brilliant idea where to go. What about spearing? Are you spear it all? Yes. Want to do that? Yes. Just when I thought you fuck, you totally <laughs> deemed yourself. <laughs> hey, I'm up one I'm up in here. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like spearing. Cause Zach like loves spearing with a passion. Like. I have I have two spear shacks ready to rip. Yeah, all right, let's do that. <laughs> I mean, if you're fine, I, I don't care what we do, but that'd be a cool thing to do too. Yep. Just telling, visiting with Drake earlier, and we talked about yesterday, driving around drilling holes, looking for an alternative plan if the first plan right. didn't work. Right. And. Uh, I went for three hours not marking fish, and we still ended up with 52 perch with the two clients and myself, but there ain't nothing worse than looking at a flasher and an empty <laughs> one at that anyway. Well, that's what it seems like. Like, I didn't know, I mean, this is my first time being up here, so you're at Basin, and I knew Basin fishing, it's just schools, but if you're not prepared for it, it can mess with a guy's mind. Oof. 
Well, there's a lot of people that would go into that situation, not mark a fish for three hours, even though their client maybe had five, six fish. Yeah. Which still is not good in three hours. Right. And they would abandon the whole area. And I just had history with the area the last few days that just told me they're here, just right. binding them. Right. And luckily I stuck around because we had a, I mean, they, I sat in the house with the two clients and had a hoot. Yeah, it was good. I sat and I think they had a 20 fish flurry. It was really good. <laughs> So guys, if you guys want to get out there ice fishing, we caught a ton of perch that day. It was a great time. Like I said, it, it was tough filming just because it was so cold uh, out there while we were, while we were filming. Um, make sure to look up Bry's Guide Service, um, brysguideservice.com. It's B-R-Y-S, guide, and then service.com. Uh, look up Dustin or any of those guys over there. They definitely uh, do a great job of getting you guys on uh, fish, ducks, um, whatever you guys want to do out there in the Devil's Lake area. Um, their phone number is 701-739-0161. Uh, make sure to check them out. And, uh, yeah, please like or subscribe our YouTube channel. We're going to try to grow this thing over the next uh, few years here as best we can, uh, showing you our experiences across the uh, globe of fishing. Thanks.